dependence, um, you don't know if a child or a person is dependent on medication until you actually remove it, and then you will actually see the autonomic symptoms of opiate withdrawal. So dependence is, is something that is um, what happens at the cellular molecular level, which I'll explain to you. But I also want you to understand that addiction, the term that we use for addiction, is really that we talk about adults with addiction. That more often is associated with uh, the psychological addiction to drugs. And that's a very different molecular and cellular pathway. I'm going to talk about two molecular cellular pathways, the dopaminergic system, which is a reward system, and the neuroepinephrine system, or the, uh, the other catecholamine, which actually is more of the thing that drives your sympathetic nervous system. Now, both of these, the reward system, um, I'm going to explain to you in just a second. So the dopamine or the reward system is the dopaminergic system that consists of um, pretty much this circuit, which is the VTA, the ventral tegmental area, which is, has a rich source of dopaminergic neurons, the nucleus accumbens, and the prefrontal cortex. This circuit is what is stimulated by anything that makes us feel good, be it food, be it chocolate, be it running, be it drugs. All of them hijack this system to, in fact, make us feel good. So it's dopamine. So when this system gets activated from the opiate exposure, does <coughs> activate the dopaminergic system, um, such that when you, in fact, remove the opiate, that is what goes on with drug craving and the ability for people to continue to seek drugs, even though they may not have a lot of the autonomic system symptoms associated with drug withdrawal. Um, I could go through this, but just I, I want to just summarize it for you and to say that although the dopamine system is the final common pathway, a lot of other neurotransmitter systems interact with that in order for there to be released. So there are many neurons that interact with each other, and the major players are really GABA, GABA neurons, and GABA um, um, is the inhibitory neurotransmitter, the most more inhibitory neurotransmitter in the, in the brain. And it is actually on dopaminergic um, neurons. And what the opiates do is sort of um, release the break of the GABAergic inhibition. So what happens is that you get an overexpression of, the, of that feeling good feeling and such that it is already a heightened level of response because the GABA break, the morphine actually removes the GABA, which actually puts a break on how much dopamine is being released. So for a given amount of opiates, you're going to have a lot of dopamine release. So if um, just to reiterate that there is, we used to think that opiates did one thing, alcohol did another, cocaine and heroin did another, but it really turns out to be that there's just one circuit, and that is the reward of circuit that consists of this VTA, nucleus accumbens, and the prefrontal cortex, and that's where this dopaminergic system is all involved. I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, I guess it has to do this way. All right, uh, just to show you where the opiate receptors are, the central mu opioid receptors, which is the mu of their three types of opioid receptors, the mu, the delta, and the kappa. The one that the morphine usually binds to is the, um, is the mu receptor, and our endogenous opiate is the endorphins, which also bind to the mu receptor, and keflins bind to the delta, and dynorphin is actually, it actually gives you dysphoria and doesn't make you feel good. Um, is a, a um, opiate receptor called a kappa receptor is involved in dynorphin. So there's always a yin and yang to all, everything that we do, and so even though uh, the good feeling opiates go up, dynorphin can also go up under these circumstances, and when you remove the opiate uh, and someone who is uh, actually dependent on it, the dynorphin system actually gets upregulated and you become dysphoric um, and have um, um, symptoms of withdrawal. Now, as we know, the physiological response to an opiate, if any one of you have ever taken morphine or oxycodone and any other synthetic opiate, you know that the first thing that happens is you kind of feel sleepy, you get a little tired, you want to rest. It also takes care of your pain, but it also causes you to breathe a little slower and to fall asleep. 
So the overall effect of an acute exposure to an opiate is to actually downregulate the cell such that it is inhibitory, so it's silent. The cell doesn't like being silent, and it in fact is going to change the inner, the inside of the cell is going to say, no, I want to be like I was normally. So the, the opiate then um, initially causes depression, but the cell regulates itself so that the, the cellular mechanisms or the secondary mes messengers within the cell upregulate so that in fact it can get back to normal. So that's how you develop this tolerance to the drug because the in, the, it's not necessarily the amount of the, the opioid receptor that's on the cell, but actually the cellular mechanisms within inside of the cell. And I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. So um, I outlined here with the problems with acute opiate response. All of this is actually pretty good. But then when you get the removal of the opiate off of the mu receptor, you have the CNS irritability. GI dysfunction, and in babies you can have seizures that can occur in 11% of infants who are not um, being treated properly. An abnormal EEG can occur in about 30% 30, 30 of those. So um, let's just say where most of this problem occurs. Let me um, come back. All right, so there's a region in the midbrain um, that is called the local surrealis. Um, we'll call it the LC. All of us have have and um, it is an incredible rich source of, neuro, um, of neuroadrenaline, uh, which I'll describe as also neuroepinephrine. And this area, um, these cells in the LC contain receptors on them, which are the mu opioid receptor, which is for, um, as we mentioned, it is for the opiate. But you also have another receptor here that is called the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor. And these both receptors are on the locus aurelius neuron, which contains a lot of neuroepinephrine. Note that the LC has projections that go to many different regions in the brain. And for the purpose of our discussion here, I would like to say that the LC very much has projections to the nucleus tractus solitaris. And the nucleus, acuteris, the nucleus tractus solitaris within the brain is the area that really um, has a lot of information or regulates the autonomic nervous system, uh, or at least projections out from the NTS regulates the autonomic nervous system. So within these LC neurons, you have neuroepinephrine. Uh, and that's the thing that actually causes us to become tachycardic. That's the, makes us breathe fast, makes us sweat, uh, because of the activation of the sympathetic nervous system.